Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Pretend Problems Podcast. I'm Kelsey Cook. And I'm Elijah Wood. <laughs> Elijah Wood? Yeah. Where did that come from? I have no idea. <laughs> Is it because we were talking about Lord of the Rings last night? Hmm. Maybe. I mean, that could be in there from that. I would imagine so. Otherwise, it's like, what were you thinking about the movie Flipper? It's like, that's kind well, of all yeah. he's known for. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, no, he's got to be known for more than that. He had to be known for something before the Lord of the Rings. But um, <laughs> Yeah, Flipper. Lord of the Rings. I just don't see the Lord of the Rings <laughs> casting company going like, we got to get that kid from Flipper. We got to get the kid from Flipper. We must. <gasps> Oh, fuck. My stomach hurts already. We got to get that kid in the Shire. <laughs> yeah. And then let's get the kid that said, Chester Copperpot in Goonies. We'll get those two, and then we'll get that Australian guy that'll later be in Lost. I'm also casting Lost. Wow, wow. So um, much movie knowledge. I wouldn't know. Well, not I've enough seen, movie knowledge. I've though, seen because, four movies. Because you said this thing, like, three of them are Lord of the Rings, apparently. Because <laughs> yeah. you said something last night, and I didn't know what it was. It's not often... Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will quote a movie and I won't know what it's from. I mean, most of the time, you'll say something and go, what movie is that from? And I just go, Austin Powers. <laughs> yeah, 99% of the time, it's Austin Powers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of an easy guess. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like a one-armed man putting something behind his back and going, pick a hand. It's like, I'm going to go with your left one again, dude. And again, sorry about the shark attack. But your left hand is what I'm going with again. You were not good at this. Oh, God. Yeah, I don't have a lot of range when quoting movies. It's mostly Austin Powers. Yep. I would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. But I got you last night. You didn't know what I was talking about because... Uh, I don't know if something was said on the screen about potatoes or something. No, here, here's what happened, oh, okay. if, if I may. You may, <laughs> yes. We were watching football mm -hmm. and the uh, advertisement for the Lord of the Ring television show on, I believe, Prime. Right. Or Max or something. Came on and I go, you're a Lord of the Rings person. Yeah. You should watch this. Yeah. And then you said, yeah, I'd give it a try. As if you meant to say, we should watch it. And I was like, oh, I meant like that can be on your list of shows you watch on the road. <laughs> when you're out of town. Yeah. Like when you go, I don't know what to watch. Then I'll say, what about that Lord of the Rings show? <laughs> okay. So you're not interested in watching it. I just anything. don't know enough about it. And yeah. I feel like it is one of those things. So we watch House of the Dragon. Mm -hmm. um, Isaac and his wife watch it, my son. And it's kind of a bonding thing mm -hmm. that we do. And I don't know that I would like it as much. If I wouldn't know the forward, what, what do you call it? A forward? I suppose, yeah. Yeah, so um, because of Game of Thrones. Yeah. So it is the precursor by several generations to Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I would like this without... I've seen Lord of the Rings, but not like not quote it, seen it. Okay. I mean, I don't have like a deep, deep knowledge of it, but... I beg to differ because your quote was <laughs> spot on. <laughs> I know, but my quote became this like funny thing in pop culture where, where people made like songs about it. So anyway, we're looking at the Lord of the Rings thing and I go, what's taters, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and you went, hmm. <laughs> and I was like, nothing, not not even a titter, which is also an Austin Powers quote. Hey, inception, mm -hmm. inception. <laughs> anyway, uh, and you were like, well, I don't know what you're talking about. I was like, oh my God, you don't know what I'm talking about. And so I played you the scene I believe it's from the second. Yeah, it's the second one because Gollum's in it. And they're having food and, and Sam says he wants a nice, nice tater. And he says, what's taters, eh? And he says, potatoes. <laughs> boil them, mash them, stick them in stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in stew. And so then on YouTube, if you look up uh, what's taters, a eh? song on YouTube, you will get a fucking banger. A club banger. Yeah from lord of the rings that somebody's remix and it's very funny and very whoever catchy. did it great job yeah because God. even when you were doing it right now i was getting into it and getting ready to go potatoes potatoes yeah po po potatoes <laughs> potatoes potatoes blah, blah, blah. it's great mm -hmm. justin if you're listening i mean maybe we fire it up rip it and throw it at the end of this episode i don't know but it's maybe you can insert the video right now I, I i'm not sure 
I don't know either. I don't make fun of you on this podcast, so I <laughs> I know you're talented, and I bet you could do it. It's very catchy. So anyway, that's that's where that came from. <laughs> also, we need to give a quick shout out to the t-shirts that we're wearing today because you were in Tampa. Yeah. Over the weekend, uh-huh. why, don't, why don't you give the backstory? Because so I've gotten so many wonderful gifts. I'm just going to point out two, and then I'm going to talk about these t-shirts. But yeah. two of my favorites, um, just from this one person, by the way, have been. Uh, I got, so I used to order a vanilla latte, Mm -hmm. three shots of espresso, one pump of vanilla. Mm -hmm. Seems easy. You could even remix it. Three shots of espresso, (laughs) one pump of vanilla, one pump of vanilla, one pump of vanilla. One motherfucking pump, one mother... That's because then then I would have to remix that because that's what I had to yell at them as I watched them go, quit, 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 quit. And I go, that looks like four. Anyways. (laughs) This is, of course, before the testing that saved my life. <laughs> I uh... <laughs> So anyways, uh... I was given a Yeti that has basically it looks like a Starbucks cup and oh. has the order on the back like they would write it on one of the cups. Oh, my God. And then on the, the bottom, one of the uh, like logos of okay. my other podcast, uh, Uncle Ronnie. And oh, yeah. then I was also given... A, a fanny pack that say C.D. White's Treats on them. Right. Because the deal behind that is, again, on my other podcast, sorry to keep bringing this up, but on my other podcast, my my uh, co-host, uh-huh. Cy, said that he has a treat bag for his dog, mm-hmm. uh, uh, whatever it's called, a fanny pack. And um, I said, well, if I ever met a woman with a fanny pack that had treats in it, I would marry her. And then this lady gave me this, but... <laughs> to give to you to give to me oh so she wasn't saying it. like that's hey. very nice yeah. so yeah. Uh, so thoughtful always so thoughtful um <laughs> her and her mom came out to tampa her and her boyfriend also came out to tampa didn't meet the boyfriend don't think he liked the show and that's okay <laughs> that's okay some people you know what i get a lot of that i get a lot of people that bring and i can go to a table and i go you brought that person didn't you and they're like how'd you know and it's like well because you're having so much fun and this person's questioning your friendship I have a theory. Yeah. I don't think it's your material that he doesn't like. She sounds like an absolute super fan of yours, which is awesome. I'm all about it. Mm-hmm. But like she buys you gifts. She loves your material. Some men, not very secure. You are an extremely hilarious, extremely attractive man who goes on stage and can, I think, sometimes just by being yourself, make other men feel like, well, oh, what the fuck? Okay. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to counter Okay. And I'm just going to say, I think this woman wouldn't date someone like that. Oh. I think I'm working on new material. Mm-hmm. Madison, Columbus, Denver, <laughs> San Francisco, Sacramento, Salt Lake City, and Las Vegas. You've been warned. If I'm still working on new material by fucking Columbus, then I'm going to be mad at myself. But Madison, come on out. Have a great time. It's going to be fun. It's so good. Um, and I know I'm biased because I'm your girlfriend, but I just watched you murder in Spokane. But anyways... So. Thank you. You're welcome. We got these t-shirts. She made these t-shirts for us. Can you guys read, read what mine says? Remarkably tolerant. Yeah. Which is spot So on. funny. So funny, but spot on. And then also mine is made on a Thursday, mm-hmm. which if you remember the episode we were talking about cars and things being made, what day uh-huh. when you're supposed to purchase a car is not <laughs> Thursday. Thursday is when everybody fucks up because they're waiting for Friday. <laughs> And so I mentioned that I, God made me on a Thursday, even though I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, so, and you the, guys remember remarkably tolerant because because it's every episode. it's every episode. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. even earlier today. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? No, we just had a little stop start. <laughs> yes, you said earlier today like it was this morning, so I was confused. Oh nope, just uh, just a short. Look at the timer on the screen. It was that plus one minute. And so... so We just started anew. We just, yeah. you know. But we didn't have to do a whole new one. Yeah. That's good. I'm so sorry. I have a yawn stuck and it won't come out. Yeah. I hate that feeling where it's like you start... I'm sure you guys, if you're watching on YouTube, you've watched me try to yawn three times in a row and it's like a halvesy. And then the big, then you actually get in. It's like a really big one. And what was happening when you were yawning three times? Oh, I was talking. <laughs> it's not. I was telling a story. That's okay. Listen. <laughs> nothing to do with you. I'm, I'm very tired. I'll tell you why in a second. Oh, keep talking. So I'm distracted. Uh huh. No, I'm not yawn actually. 
Oh, guess what that is? That's empathy, motherfuckers. Oh, I can't get it out. Oh, I so just had a full yawn. I'm rested. Let's party. <laughs> I can't get it out. Anyway, okay, I will push through. So you had, did you feel like you had a great experience in Tampa? I had a, uh, for the most part, yeah, great experience in Tampa. Yeah, you liked your shows for the most part? I did like my shows. Yeah, I liked uh, I liked all the people. Mm-hmm. Everyone's very nice. The staff, the, uh, the owner, BP is great. Mm-hmm. I mean, everything is... I <laughs> keep talking, <laughs> not to make me yawn, oh but just God. to distract me. You're like one of those people that go, I love your comedy. It puts me to sleep at night. <laughs> not true. Anyway, <laughs> you also, you just outed me, by the way, on Middle of Somewhere for listening to episodes twice because I miss you. I'm like, well, that's embarrassing. People know that now. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that was embarrassing. It's Okay. Uh, when I was a boy, <laughs> I used to take a three, uh, a big wheel, a hot wheel, uh-huh. and I, a big wheel, thing is called a big wheel, and I would go down this hill, I would go all the way up to this <gasps> judge's house, yeah, that's what I fucking thought, I yawned. unbelievable, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a good one, that's so satisfying, okay, um, you had a mostly good time in Tampa, I had an all, I had a great time in great Tampa, great time in Tampa, yeah. great, um, I I had a great time in Fort Collins. I have said it before. I'll say it again. Comedy Fort, one of the best clubs in the country. If you live in Fort Collins, goddamn, you are so lucky and you don't even know it. Well, maybe you know it, but like truly it's such a special place and the crowds are always fantastic. This weekend was no exception, but on the Thursday show, there was a man in the very, very front row, of course, because that's mm-hmm. always how this happens, who... I'm going to say mid 50s um, and just had like a... No, it was not me. No, it was <laughs> not Chad. <laughs> and I look down about 15 minutes into my set and he's just on his phone, just texting, just openly, at like three feet from me on his phone. And so I stopped the show. And I, if you follow me online at Kelsey Cook Comedy, you should. Um, I posted the clip of it a couple of days ago and it, the, it's just wild. I stopped the show and was like, love that there's a guy texting on his phone while I'm doing my set. And he didn't even look up. He was so just deep down the rabbit hole of what he was doing. He had completely dissociated. I said it right this time. If you watch the clip on YouTube, I said disassociated and did not even know I was talking to him mm-hmm. for like, probably 10 seconds and then he finally looked up and he said that he was a manager of a car dealership and he was it was like a work text or whatever um and then he put his phone away and he was fine the rest of the show but it's interesting i've gotten some comments so far today of like whoa she was way too nice to him oh interesting and it's hard because it's like i always do have an instinct to be like hey dude are you fucking kidding me? And to like, you kind of want to be like, you're a grown man and you don't know that you shouldn't do that shit at a comedy show. Like he just reeked of like white male privilege of like, I go anywhere I want to do anything I want. Rules don't apply to me. Uh, And? And? I meant like, (laughs) it's what we do. And? (laughs) And he, uh, yeah, when people are like, oh, she was way too nice to him. It's hard because if you really turn on somebody like that, especially when you're 15 minutes into your set, you still have to finish the rest of your set after potentially making it a really weird energy in the room. So I feel like at least for me, yeah. I'm trying to f- always figure out like, okay, how can I roast this person while keeping it light enough that I can still just like get back into my act? Interesting. What's your... Uh, how do you feel about this? Well, stuff? a long time ago. <laughs> a long time ago. In a village far, far away. I didn't take uh, a whole bunch of shit yeah. from people. So I went from, um, I would jump in the deep end. Okay. Like I went from where I was to where I wanted it to end. There was no escalation. It was like, I'm not taking the stairs. I'm taking the fucking elevator. I'm going straight to my point. And so there were uh, four ladies, and I was probably, I'm going to guess, late 20s. I was in Livonia, Michigan. And I remember this because somebody just brought it up to me. (laughs) But they were heckling me, and I went right to ruin your life. I went from, oh, what'd you say? And had them repeat it, 
right to ruin your life. And uh, <laughs> what did they say? Well, they were pissed and like, whoa, we were just, we do this all the time when we come here. I'm like, not any fucking more. Right. No. So I went to there and then the crowd hated me. And I go, oh, do you hate me for making fun of them? You're going to hate this even more. And I had them removed from the showroom. And then I just basically did the rest of my set in silence. Because I'm like, oh, you're going to bitch up over this? Well, guess what? You're going to really hate this. Bye. And, I, and the security guard was like, what? They, they were being quiet after that. And I go, no, I know. It's okay. Oh, my God. You're yeah. wild. I'm a bitch is what I am. <laughs> But um, you dad, everybody change my ways. <laughs> now I now when someone heckles me, I'm really interested in what their thought process is. I will have a full conversation with them and I will give the crowd stoppage time like a soccer match afterwards and just oh. be like, if I talk to this person for four minutes, I promise you will get an extra four minutes at the end. Yeah. This doesn't come off the actual comedy time. Yeah. But when people are, you know, heckling, I go, why would you why would you say that? <laughs> And they're like, well, because, and then you can kind of see him go, um, I don't, I don't know why I said that. And I'm like, I really would like to know why you said that. Cause it kind of hurt my feelings. Like, <laughs> then the crowd's like, oh, Jesus Christ, this guy's an, an animal. It is, I think even better to do it, it like is, that. It is, but I, but I wasn't trying to do that. I just yeah. kind of happened upon it one time yeah. where I go, can you explain yeah. why you're saying that to me? And the guy was like. Um, just fucking went full panic. Oh my god! I'm like, I don't know. I guess I'll keep that in the old bag of tricks. Just approaching it with curiosity. Yeah. Yeah, I think it it does have the um, the ability to make them feel even more dumb, like you said. And I mm. I do like that part of it to be like, sure. Hey, t- so what are you doing? Well, why would you do that right now? Mm-hmm. To just have them be like, oh yeah, I guess that was a real dumb shit move. Because, Instead of just being like, what yeah. the fuck, man? Yeah. When anger is met with anger, then you can stand your ground. Mm-hmm. When it is met with either genuine curiosity or kindness, and, and it the scales tip so far, yeah. and you're just in, the mayor of Prickville, yeah. then everybody kind of calms down. Do you have any go-to comedy tricks that you're willing to share? Oh, go-to comedy tricks. Because I know a magician doesn't doesn't share their tricks, but... I don't think I have a go-to trick. You and I have talked about that, um, which I actually forgot to do for part of the clip that I posted, that it's important when you are doing crowd work, if you're asking somebody something, to repeat what they said into the microphone because oftentimes the rest of the crowd can't hear what that person's mm-hmm. saying. And it also, if you do that, can give you a second to think about what you want to say next. Do you think you did that in the clip with the guy on the phone? Um, I, that's what I was saying. I didn't for part of it. I forgot to say, to repeat. Oh, okay. I work at a car dealership. Um, so Let here's, a, ask. what's your, well, what's cause, your Cause I, I haven't had to use it in a long time, but I love this one. Mm-hmm. It is 95%. I know 95% of you are having a good time right now, Yeah. but there's 5% not having a good time and that's okay because, and then I'll say something like, I'm only contractually obligated for 90% of you to have a good time. So I'm actually above quota. <laughs> and then I go, you know, but, but we got to, we're going to get the five. And you have people that are kind of on the fence. Yeah. Everybody wants to be part of a majority. It's just interesting. mental where if they're on the fence, they immediately go, I'm in the 95. Where's the where are the 5%? And they start looking around Whoa. and then they get more they get more invested in the show. I've never seen you do that. That's I've I've done it, but I will it's fun because I'll have people laughing sometimes mm-hmm. and then they're not and they're kind of they're kind of tilting their head and checking me out and that's when I'll do it to yeah. see what they do. Yeah. And the majority of the time then they will this stops, the tilting of the head stops and yeah. they're laughing at everything because they want to be part of the fun group. Yeah, I love that. Uh, your opener, Ran Barnaclo, does something that I always find very funny. And I th- I see you do it sometimes too. And I'm always afraid to do it because I'm afraid to like, I- I'm worried it's going to tank the set, but it never does when you guys do it. You'll go, this side of the room fucking sucks. This side's cool or whatever. And then this side of the room that you're saying sucks, they're like, well, we don't want to suck. And so then they kind of mm-hmm. get their shit together. Yeah. So I've seen that. One of my favorite things I've ever seen a comic say on stage during a heckle, which I think is the just perfect way of like 
shutting the person down but diffusing it immediately is Jim Norton, who I opened for 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 several years. He uh, if if he has somebody shout something at him during a punchline, he'd go, "Sir, you have the timing of diarrhea in the ninth inning," and it just <laughs> I made me laugh so hard. <laughs> When I'd hear him say it, because it was like it, everybody immediately starts laughing and the person feels stupid, yeah, but so like terrible. not enough to be mad at him, but just enough to be like, oh, yeah, should I should not say anything right now. Yeah, that's perfect. I love that one very much. Um, yeah. So other than that moment with Bo, Bo, we I asked what your name was. Your name is Bo. And I told you you need to get your shit together. So I hope you've gotten your shit together and I hope you don't. Mm -hmm. text in the front row of a comedy show anymore um b-o or b-e-a-u i don't know mm. i it's hoped for b-o because b-e-a-u is french for beautiful and i don't want to give him that credit right okay yeah i think <laughs> i i do think there's two different kinds of bows in this world and i do think it often depends on the spelling yeah that's what i found interesting yeah. are you partial to one or the other depends what we're doing Oh, okay. If, you know, if we're going to go uh, beat up somebody from a minority group, I'd prefer a B.O. <laughs> if we're going to go over there and be kind to them and invite them into our group, a B.E.A.U. That's so funny. My cousin, Bo, is B.E.A.U. And he is like one of the sweetest souls mm -hmm. that's walked this planet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I have a great, great friend um, named Bo spelled that way. And it's uh, he's... He's fucking lovely. Oh, yeah. Like a lovely human being on all aspects. Yeah. How weird. I find that shit fascinating. And then B.O. a lot of time you go, um, if you were born, if you would have been alive during Prohibition, you would have, you would have run booze <laughs> and killed cops. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking of Bo Duke from the Dukes of Hazard. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's very specific. <laughs> And yep. it wasn't prohibition, but Hazard County was a dry county. So it's, it doesn't matter, you guys. It's fine. Again, <laughs> another reference I don't understand because I didn't watch that. Well, this is just my white male privilege knowing everything. <laughs> I rarely use phrases like white male privilege because I think as soon as you say something like that, people are like, okay, enough. Even I get a little, uh, but he just... He just had a way about him where I was there like, are. you have never like faced consequences for anything. There <laughs> are very cool people at golf courses now, mm -hmm. but uh, that's the reason I didn't start golfing when I was a kid. I had clubs, these old junkers, and I went out to the <laughs> golf course and it was that, what you just said. Yeah. It was Bo, except on the payphone because I was a yeah. kid and they didn't have cell phones, but on the payphone talking to the the uh, dealership wondering being like nice clubs kid that kind of shit yeah brutal and i could tell that if you're doing something like that you obviously like did not come specifically to see me like somebody brought you and so there was an another guy sitting next to him and i was like are you with him and he was like oh, yeah <laughs> fucking Bo. I know I said that I was like oh you're like oh fucking Bo always does this so I think the guy he was with <clears throat> was a fan of mine and maybe like bought Bo's ticket for him obviously because he could not have given less of a fuck but other than that every show was like truly fucking incredible that that place is bananas so that's awesome I hear nothing but so good things about it yeah it's so great thank you guys for coming out um, <laughs> Can we make the assumption that if Bo's friend had to buy his ticket for him and Bo was on the phone after seven o'clock for work, mm -hmm. that he's not that good at his job and hardly moving cars? <laughs> Possibly. I have no idea. <laughs> I just really like to pile it on. I can promise you one thing. Bo is not listening to this podcast because he doesn't <laughs> follow me online because he's not a fan. <laughs> um how did you feel about me last night when I was clearing my throat 17 times in a row? Did you have a murderous rage in you? No, but I did say, and mm -hmm. I thought I th I thought it was like a good way to do it. Yeah. I said, would you like to take a minute and get that out of there? <laughs> yeah. Because otherwise it was, <clears throat> <clears throat> and then I'm like sitting there trying to fall asleep, but I'm like, well, I know another one's coming. So I'm waiting for it. Oh. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
consume. I don't know that you should have a gigantic fucking mouth guard in and sleep on your back because it just seems like there's going to be stalactite, stalagmite, hanging down and eventually break off into your throat and you're going to go, ah, ah, eh. <laughs> Yes, I did think you handled it really well and I'm sorry. I felt really bad. No, no, no. I, I, I really, if it would have bothered me, I would have been like, hey, uh, please. <laughs> or I would have grabbed my pillow and went downstairs for something. But I just yeah. thought, I think this is going to be a good way to do it. Yeah, it was. I can say, I can say, I think you should take a minute mm-hmm. because I know that you're trying to be quiet. Mm-hmm. And if you take a minute to, to do it, and then great. Yeah. And then everybody's happy. And then you, because I've done that before too, where I'm miserable. Yeah. Like you choke on your own spit in a place where you're supposed to be quiet. Yeah. Fucking best of luck. Ugh. That's what was happening last Mm -hmm. night. I was like, oh my God, I like can feel that I'm not getting my throat totally clear right now. And it's my brain's not going to let me go to sleep until I do. Mm -hmm. But I didn't want to wake you up. I know you'd gotten like almost no sleep the night before. And you know, people talk about getting sleep divorced where they're fully, you know, married, live together, all this stuff, but they sleep in different beds and different rooms so that they can get the best sleep because maybe they just like for whatever reason don't sleep well together and i just never want to do that you're like i do <laughs> no no no, i don't either that's why i i mean yeah but i think at, at a certain point if you're if you have to clear your throat all night which some sometimes maybe you'll have to yeah but i, I just i know that i won't be able to sleep yeah i think if I, go ahead oh no no i'm sorry go ahead i was just because i did get two hours of sleep the night before yeah because i wanted to be home for football That's on me. I understand that. I know. I've been like, can you please stop taking the very first flight out so you can get some sleep and just prioritize your health? And you're like, not during football season. Middle of February, I can. It just feels not great. There's going to be some Monday night games. There's going to be some Sunday night games. I'll get some sleep. Okay. And we don't work this weekend. That's true. Woo! 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 But yeah, next time I will, I think I'll just get out of bed and like go into the bathroom in their hallway and do it and then come back to bed. Oh, I think you should just do it. I don't think you should make an extra effort. That's like that guy that farted and his wife got mad. <laughs> I know, but I don't want to wake you up. I don't think you will. Oh, all right. I think you should, I think you should blast it. <laughs> Here. You want to talk about last night? Okay. Here is what shocked me awake. Oh no. We lay there and she she not begs but asks in a way for me to sleep with no shirt on. I like sleeping with a shirt on. I'm comfortable that way. I don't have to worry about in the middle of the night the covers being off me but I'm sleeping but she gets up to pee and then she turns. It's like, "Oh, I just want to see him when he's sleeping." It's like, "Jesus Christ." And so I, I just like having a shirt on. It makes me feel protected. It makes me, f- whatever. It doesn't, so. But haven't you told me that you like to sleep naked? That like this when whole. When no one's yes, around. Yes, exactly. So this having a shirt thing is just body dysmorphia. No, 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 I, no, no, no. I don't think it is. I think it's just when I'm around others, it's just, I, it's comfortable for me. So uh, last night I'm laying there. And you fucking jailbreaked your hand and you touched my stomach with your finger. It draped down the side of my stomach. And I went. <laughs> when? I don't know. I mean, I was like just about to sleep and then I felt it drape down. And I was like. Daddy! And then I like rolled over and <laughs> then I was like, um, can we can we have some space? <laughs> Oh my God. That's why you were like, hey, can you do mind scooting over a little bit? Well, sometimes I'm on the edge of the bed and you come up for warmth right next to me. And it's like, I can't even roll over at this point because I'm going to hit her. I do bookend you. (laughs) Yeah. And I do, I flail at night. Yeah. There's been times where I've knocked the the lamp off of the end table. And there's times where I hurt, like, I hurt my knuckle because it hits the headboard uh, at a hotel or something. Yeah. And I just don't ever, ever want your face to get in the way. <laughs> that would be so fucking brutal. Yeah. Um, so, so then I just, I'm like, I just need to be able to move a little bit. Because we have a king-size bed and it's like often... 
you, there are times where I'll come back from the bathroom and I'll look at where you're at and I go, I could pick either side and have the same <laughs> amount of space. I just love you. <laughs> I just like to be right next to you. I know that. I mean, I, I love you too, but I just also like, I like to be able to roll like, over. I know. <laughs> I know. But I still don't ever want to get sleep divorced. That sounds horrible. That's I like know. farmer shit where they had to push their beds together to fuck and then they put them back together so they could sleep. And oh. I get that because at that point you don't have the spring, you don't have the like the beautiful mattresses you're on springs and any movement is waking yeah. somebody else up or hey yeah 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 um yeah you we were spooning last night and you had a jolt as i think you were falling asleep you went Kah! and like fully like karate chopped behind me so it wasn't at me but it was you did oh. a poo oh wow hey <laughs> yeah yeah bitch yeah you you kind of flailed but gosh it's so i mean and this is the the thing about body dysmorphia that I've had to come to be like, yeah, it's not a... Whoa. No. I just like having a shirt on. No, we're talking about touching your stomach. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. I forgot I said that part. Oh. <laughs> that it doesn't matter if I'm like... It doesn't matter what I say to you. It's like if you tell a person with anxiety, hey, stop worrying. They're like, cool, bro. That did nothing. Like, it's mm. not for me to be able to fix in you but it just is so crazy like to me that i touched your stomach i didn't even know i touched your stomach i like want to touch your stomach all the time to me that's just like an intimate like i want to just feel your stomach it's like a primal you're not going to feel a kick stuff there's nothing in there you know that right i know oh. i want to just okay like don't you want to just like put your hand on my stomach sometimes sure well yeah i want to put my hand on your stomach okay and so but and you won't let me and so anyway, apparently I grazed it last night, didn't even know, and that mm -hmm. sent you into a thing. Yeah, I guess. So. You're going to keep going to somatic therapy? Where are you going to be? You're going to keep up? going to somatic therapy? Yeah, maybe. Mm. She always tells me to take a break. Oh, good. I think that's good advice. Let your body integrate it. Yeah. But um, Okay, so Chad and I are both off this weekend, but then I'm in Omaha, and then Phoenix, then Providence, then Dania Beach in San Antonio and Austin. You can get tickets at KelseyCook.com. I you? already gave you mine. Oh, yeah, you already did. I, I went through the, the things. Yeah. Um, instead of a middle segment today, can I just share what we're about to go do? Yes, please. So we are about to go to um, an AFTD fundraiser. That is the Association for Frontotemporal Dementia. Uh, and as you guys know, my mom has FTD. And so... We've never done something like this. We've never gone and like volunteered at a, an organized thing before. And the woman who's putting it on uh, without knowing what I did for a living asked if I would be the guest speaker for the fundraiser and share um, my experience with my mom having it. And... Uh, I'm nervous because I've never spoken in anything like this. And I told you earlier, I was like, well, I guess you can't bomb if you're not trying to make people laugh. Yeah, so. it's, and it's a different thing altogether. Yeah. You know, and you're, you're going to be telling them something very close to you and very personal. And that yeah. to me is, I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty personal on stage, yeah. but not like this. You know, I, yeah. nothing that's... Um, when I'm personal on stage, it's the part of that story that I think is funny, yeah. not the part that is is serious and, and it lives in my soul. So. Right. And I've talked about my mom's dementia on stage and tried to find ways to like joke about certain aspects of it. But um, yeah, this is like a straight up speaking at an event that is a, like a serious thing. So next time we record, I'll let you guys know how it went, but... Um, I'm very excited that you're going to be with me. Oh, me too. Yeah. I'll let you know how it went. It went great. Thank you. That's very nice. Mm. Um, should we do some listener emails? I hope. Yes. So as always, it's pretend problems podcast at gmail.com. If you would like to write in and get relationship advice from us, life advice from us, if you've got something to say regarding like a topic we covered on the show, then do that too. Mia is always on my lap and <laughs> always about to get smooshed. I'm sorry. Cat, cat top? Cat top. I don't think I said that, but that's very funny. Um, okay. So 
This is titled EMDR Experience. They say, hi, Kelsey and Chad. Greetings from a fellow Minnesota native. Uh, big fan of both of you. After hearing Chad talk about his EMDR concerns a couple episodes ago, I felt the need to write in to share my experience so far. Uh, I'm fairly new to EMDR. I've only done five sessions so far, but I'm already so happy I chose to go down this route. If you guys don't remember, EMDR is eye movement desensitization response. Mm, yeah, maybe. I think so. Uh, first off, I've never been hypnotized, but I don't think it's anything remotely like that. I know it can be done a few different ways, but my therapist has me hold two egg-shaped things that vibrate. Oh, wow. Hello. I wonder where those were before your I session. I feel like maybe you have been hypnotized. Yeah, maybe puree all your hands after, uh, after you do these sessions. Mm. Uh, and she controls the speed and frequency of the vibrations. Then we decide what I'm going to focus on. We usually do one of my belief systems that we're trying to destroy. And then I close my eyes and just see where my mind goes. My understanding is that it mimics REM sleep, but you're awake. So it allows you to access different parts of your memory. Whoa. That's yeah. very cool. I think that shit is so cool. I love that. Um, and I don't see any way that my therapist could possibly do anything nefarious while we're doing this. And let me tell you, it works. I have childhood trauma, and I don't remember a lot of my childhood. My family's way of handling difficult things in life was just to ignore it and pretend like it didn't happen, which also meant I didn't get to feel my feelings. And unfortunately, I continued dealing with life like that until this year. I haven't had any profound breakthroughs, but my inner child is finally letting me feel some of her pain. And I know this inner child shit sounds ridiculous, but I swear it helps when you accept that the child version of you is still in there. I had therapy yesterday and we did two quick rounds of EMDR at the end because of what came up through the session. And the first thing I said to my therapist once I pulled myself together was, holy fuck, that was intense. My inner child showed me some pain yesterday. And before we were done with that round of EMDR, I was shaking and sobbing uncontrollably. And this is going to sound weird, but this is the second time I've had feelings come out like this and I can't explain it, but I can absolutely tell those aren't my feelings coming out. Those were the feelings of a very hurt six-year-old girl. And while I haven't gotten to the point of fully processing my childhood and healing, it is so validating being able to access these feelings. I relate to a lot of what Chad says and the things he gets frustrated over while out in public. I'm just not a reactive person, so I internalize all that frustration. So I thought I would share my experience because something tells me that this is something that Chad would also find beneficial. Thank you. That is Whoa. a really amazing email. So I appreciate you taking the time to write yeah, all of that in. That's wild. First of all, uh, sorry about all the stuff. Yeah. That happened when you were younger. Um, I would love to get one of those vibrating eggs and off the end of it be shaking uncontrollably. <laughs> but I would rather n not in front of a therapist. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. but I, I the, the fact that it mimics uh, REM sleep and um, yeah, like accesses the different parts and then it's, it's so interesting. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've cried in therapy, not bragging, but kind of. And, uh, <laughs> but I, I just wonder, I wonder what would happen if I, if I tried that, but I'm not, um, I don't think I'm going to try that yet, but it does sound um, incredible. Yeah. I find all of that so interesting. The whole idea of like mimicking REM sleep and the different types of brain waves you have in different sleep stages mm -hmm. and how they tell you to be really aware of what you do the first like hour that you're awake because your brain is it in gamma rays maybe mm -hmm. your brain or not rays waves your brain is still in the sort of wave patterns that are happening when you're in REM and so it's more susceptible to whatever's happening in that first hour of the day. So I have now, I'm pretty proud of myself, actually. I do not check social media in the first hour of the day because it's just like such a, like you just don't know what you're going to see. You don't know if you're going to like get hit with uh, like a bad dopamine feeling. Is that possible? Bad dopamine? Bad adrenaline? Yes, um, sh bad. Yeah. I don't think dopamine is bad. It can be bad, but. Okay. Um. Anyway, it's just like, they say, like, don't get on social media for the first hour of the day. Like, let your brain and your body get acclimated to a new day and that it's such a good time to think about, like, setting intentions and, and all of that stuff. So, yeah. This episode is brought to you by TikTok and Instagram. <laughs>
Uh, yeah, I mean, you really want to feel great. Erase social media from your phone. Hell yeah. I did that a long time ago, and I got to tell you, I just, yeah, it's so incredible. Yeah, I'm... I've told you before, so Delaney, who, you know, a lot of you listeners are also self-helpless people. Uh, Delaney d- deleted all of her social media a long time ago. And not just the apps, like her accounts. She just straight up doesn't have social media anymore. And mm-hmm. she is like one of the happier people I know in my <laughs> life. Like she's just, she's yeah. very unbothered because it's like there's nothing really to be bothered about, at least online for her. So mm-hmm. pretty cool. Um, yeah, thank you so much for writing in. Are gamma rays what they use to fight ghosts in Ghostbusters? <laughs> I think so. Maybe. I think they had a gamma. Like a, uh, maybe that. Some someone's gonna write in and be like, "I know, uh, bro." Is it theta waves? The packs yeah. were made of this. Yeah, and that's fine. We'll take it. Ugh. Uh, Okay, this is titled Ice Cream Solution. They say, hello to the both of you. My wife and I love your podcast. We were lucky enough to be introduced to Chad's comedy via the Power Trip Morning Show, and we were then introduced to the amazingly funny Kelsey. Thank you. We have been lucky enough to see Kelsey live at Acme and will be attending Chad's show in Madison. In fact, my wife is purposely delaying her herniated disc back surgery a week so we can attend. (laughs) That's when you know people aren't worried about laughing. Like, I need back surgery, but I'm comfortable going to this one. <laughs> oh, my God. You're ridiculous. I know. That's incredible. Thank you. Can't, I can't wait to see you. So nice. Um, we're very excited to see him live as we love his specials and have watched them multiple times. We wanted to see if we could help you enjoy ice cream again without the intestinal ravaging fun that accompanies it. Not that we don't enjoy a 24-second fart every now and again. <laughs> uh, we use the ninja... <laughs> That was a guesstimate, by the way. <laughs> I might have broken your record this morning. We had Chipotle last night, and Ooh. it's been uh, an interesting morning. Mm-hmm. By the way, their new smoked brisket. Smoked brisket. Whew. I'm going to go ahead and say get on it. Get the fuck on it. Because I don't know how long it's going to be there, but when it's gone, it's one of those things where you go get it before it's gone, and you're like, whatever, bitch. No, get it before it's I gone. I might honestly tell you, go in and get it because it was delicious. Oh my God, it was so, so good. So they say, we use the Ninja Creamy Ice Cream Maker to make high protein slash low calorie ice cream using lactose-free fair life milk, protein powder, and sugar-free pudding mixes. The beauty of this machine is you can make ice cream with a ton of different ingredients to cater to your dietary needs. There are so many videos on YouTube guiding you through the recipes. We love that we can enjoy ice cream again without the limitations that normal ice cream places on us. Thank you again for your great podcast. We love it. Feel free to share our names. Save the turtles, but us first. Uh, Kelsey and Greg. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's awesome. That is awesome. Hey. Guess who got a creamy Greg. August 1st this year? Yeah. That was one I of did. my anniversary presents to Chad. And have you used it yet? I have not. <laughs> well. What's the date? September 23rd. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to. I'm going to piece... get you a chemistry set next year and be like, here, make a volcano. <laughs> um, I'm not trying to actually make you feel bad, but. I, no, I did because I, I brought it to the cabin because Olivia and I were going to use it. Mm-hmm. And then um, kind of just all hell broke loose. Yeah. And she was, the countdown to her going to Costa Rica sped up, sped up, sped up. Yeah. And, um, then I was trying, because I can't have anything with whey in it. So I'd have to have oat milk and all this other shit. Mm-hmm. Um, just going, just trying to figure out how to end this excuse. Mm, yeah, find it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. What's the next one? Why don't you bring it to the house when you come back from the cabin this time so we can make some? I will. Okay. Yeah. And just to make you feel better, you got me a beautiful art set as part of my anniversary gift, which I haven't used yet. So I know. You said, boy, it sure would be nice to sit down on the back of the pontoon and sketch these things. <laughs> well, I can sit on our, our deck. What if you sketched me using the creamy? Come <gasps> on. There we go. Tie goes to the runner. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to do another one real quick, and then we're going to have to get to more emails next time. And also, 
on our full long Patreon that you guys know uh, are a bunch of extra listener questions that will be coming out very soon. Yeah. By the end of this month, which is our our promise to y'all. Okay. This is titled Airline Opinion from a Tall Person. Hello, Chad and Kelsey. Longtime fan of both of you. Having had the privilege of seeing both of you multiple times. Whoa. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. After listening to the multi-episode debate about reclining on an airplane, (laughs) I figured I would weigh in as a larger than average person. At 6'4", 285 pounds, my knees come up so high that I can't set the tray table down without crossing my legs underneath me, which eventually leads to knee slash joint pain. Even if I can set it down, putting a computer up and actually doing work is difficult when fully upright and prohibitive when the person in front of me reclines. And then they put in all caps, with all of that said... I don't object to your right to recline, but given the above, you will inevitably have to deal with my knees in your back, whether malicious or not, and will absolutely be using your headrest as leverage to stand slash sit as needed (laughs) because I absolutely have to ninja my way in and out of my seat at that point. Yep. My preferred compromise is recline about halfway and stop there as it leaves us both only slightly unhappy. Uh, Of note, Kelsey, me reclining is a good suggestion, but does nothing for my legs. Chad, I do book the bulkhead and or economy plus as often as possible, um, but there are times where that's not an option. As a right. tall person, I do have a lot of advantages. However, I counter Chad's offer to suck his dick by suggesting that we think about the number six and nine because flying ain't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, knowing that this won't make it on the podcast, if it somehow does, feel free to use my name. Looking forward to seeing you both again soon. Sean, Sean, of course I could make uh, it on the podcast. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. If Sean and I 69, it would just be, uh, I'd be motorboating your tits. <laughs> oh, you guys. Uh, whoa, almost clamped the mic and the laptop. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for writing in. We appreciate you. If you want to um, listen to bonus episodes, it's patreon.com slash pretend problems mm-hmm. if you want some more. Yeah. Okay. We're off to the the fundraiser. Wish us luck. I hope we raise several funds. Yes. What we need is a few good taters. What's taters, Brussels? What's taters, huh? Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them, boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them, potato, 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 potato. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Potato, potatoes. Potatoes. What's potatoes? Potatoes. What's potatoes? Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. What's potatoes? What's what's potatoes? Boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Boil them, mash them, boil them, boil them, boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Taters. What's total?